Peace, peace, peace. <clears throat> All right, we're going to continue on with the Kundalini Prana, the universal life force energy. So that's the plan for the day. So let me check some things out here. All right. So we got into the last time a lot of information concerning Kundalini and Prana energy. All right. So we're going to continue with that. And excuse the noise in the background. All right. So the subtle levels is composed of the vital life force, Prana, mind, menace, intelligent, Buddha, ego, Mahakara, and the feeling self. Chitta. Prana is the means by which the subtle and the gross in the human organisms are connected. It activates all the systems in the body, including the nervous system. And it helps those or them that work together as it should. Prana is distributed throughout the body by the nadis, channels of energy. We spoke about the seven chakras. So we go to the stages in Kundalini Awakening. These are the stages. All right. You have the left, which is the Ida. You have the right, which is the Pingala. These are the sacral nerves in which that must be activated before the central channel, which is the Shushuna Nadi, which is also called the silver cord. The Kundalini comes up into. So you have prana usually flowing. These are the six stages. Prana usually flowing in the Ida or Pingala. Prana is made to flow in the Ida and the Pingala. Now, how do you do that? Well, the technique in order to make the energy flow in the Ida or the Pingala, better yet, to flow in the Ida and the Pingala is the alternating nostril breath technique. The cycle is four, six, ten. Hold on. Is four, sixteen, eight is the cycle. Four, sixteen, eight. All right, four sixteen eight is the cycle. Some can do two eight four. Two eight four. All right, if you can't hold your breath for sixteen seconds, but the average is four sixteen eight. So we can do eight thirty two sixteen. But by alternating the nostrils, what happened is that you make the prana flow through the Ida and the Pingala. So the next level would simply be prana to flow in through the Shushuna. All right. So after you master the breathing technique of the alternating nostrils called 
Valoma. All right. It's called Valoma. Anuna Valoma is the name of it, the alternating nostril breath technique. Now, the next thing is to make the energy flow through the Shushuna. My teacher, because I've had teachers, Grandmaster Sonia Saraswati, in his book, Jewel in the Lotus, he shows us that we can sit with our hands on our lap or knees, back is straight. We breathe in. Two sniffs. Lean forward. That will begin to flow energy into the Shushuna. And then in order to awaken the Kundalini, you simply breathe in. Imagine energy going down and striking the sacral bone. Breathe in. And you're going down, striking the sacral bone. All right. Those strikes awaken the Kundalini. Now you lead. Once the Kundalini is awakened, now you can lead it upward. So, you breathe in, pull up your anal muscles, and visualize the energy coming up. As you breathe in, Now you circulate the energy through the conceptional functional vessel, which is down the front to the perineum. Breathe back in and up. Down towards the nose and then down towards as you exhale back to the perineum. Breathe up to the top of the head, back down towards the nose, back down towards the perineum as you exhale. Circulate, circulate the energy. And then on the last one, you send energy down towards the navel. And keep the energy there. The energy rises to the shahadara, which is top of the head. But we bring the energy back down and circulate it. We don't just leave it there. That's what they do within the yogi traditions, is just leave it there. Now, if you're now. What you want, because actually what the Kundalini does at the Sahara is causes, if you leave it there, it causes the glow to come over top of the head, which is your halo, your aura expands here. That flame becomes enlightened, which is, of course, the pineal gland is like a flickering of a flame. You begin to start seeing it as a white image or a white spot in the darkness that is now the lit of the flame and it produces DMT 
all right, which is also called um, penoline, also penoline. These two chemicals produces what they refer to is um, hallucinogen, but it's not you hallucinating. It is actually producing more of this living chemical through your head in which that awakens the soul principle, which is the Heru, the Christ. And this produces this golden halo if you leave it there in the Shaharara, which um, the yogi masters do. Now, if you circulate it back down, like it's taught within Taoism, and circulate it, that causes all of the chakras to become illuminated in which that fills in your auric fill and expands your auric fill, and therefore you have more light throughout the body. Okay. This is when you want to gather enough energy to, to merge the dantians to make them just one functional dantian. Once that is accomplished, you can create your macabre. In particular, the heart and the head. In the right ventricle of the heart, we find what is called a seed atom. There's three places for the seed atom, solar plexus, the heart, and the third eye region. These seed atoms, all your life experiences, especially in the heart, all your life experiences are inscribed upon this area here, your heart. This is why they have the heart weighing against the feather. The feather is the feather of shoe, of air. And if the heart is lighter than the air, the feather, then there's no longer reincarnation is necessary. Incarnation is not necessary any longer. While if the heart is heavier than the air or the feather, shoe, the breath of life, then you will have to incarnate once again into physical form. In this third dimensional apparent reality or another third dimensional apparent reality, it doesn't matter. Within us, there are transformers of energy vital to our psychophysiological being, our well-being in that. In the East, they're called your chakras, the wheels or vortexes, as we talked about earlier, while in the West, they're called the churches, places of assembly. We think is that the external church outside of us, when your chakras are the churches, we've gone over this before. The same continents that's in the word chakras and the word churches are the exact same. As you see here, C-H-C-H. R-R-K-C-H. Cause the C-H sound, k -k make a K sound. Then the S, the S. The vowels, only thing that are different. These subtle transformers are intimately related with our psyche and our physical well-being. A chakra is merely a place where energy is moved from one place to another. Your pineal gland absorbs energy through the hair follicles into the scalp, down into the pineal gland. The pineal gland acts as a step-down transformer of electromagnetic energy and transfers the energy now to the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland to the thyroid and parathyroid glands, then from there to the thymus gland, from there to the spleen and pancreas, from adrenal glands, and then to the uterus, the ovaries and the uterus for the women, for the men, the prostate and the testes. There are many such places in the body, but in relation with spirituality and consciousness, there are fundamental areas illustrated here, properly defined. When a chakra has been developed to a higher degree, it is then called a church. We spoke about this the other night. This is where angels come and they, and they are able to commune to you via your auric field, your chakras. 
and give you information in which that you're able to tap into uh, uh, the ethers, the Akashic records, as it is called, and make sure that you're receiving the information properly. These are angles of light. Angels are angles of light. So you want these angles of light to hit you properly as compared to demons. All right? Demonic forces, demons. These are improper lights that hit and strikes the auric field. The chakras in common and ordinary people are only for the sense of their animal soul, nephish. Their chakras are intimately related with the psychobiological functions of their human organism. The tafa, subtle vibrations, enter through the chakras and then into our endocrine glands. The endocrine glands then transform the tafa into hormones. So the astral chakras are the gates of the entry for the tafas. However, when the astral body is christened or crucified, crucified by means of the third degree, third degree master mason level of the power of fire, then the seven chakras are transformed into the seven churches to which the book of Revelations apocalypse refers. Without the three degrees of power of the fire, which is talking about the three chakras that we talked about earlier, the lower Dantian, the mid Dantian, and the upper Dantian. These are the three degrees of the power of the fire. The chakras are just senses of animal soul. Animal soul, in other words, the animal spirit, the spirit in which that inhabits and animates the physical body, the nephish. Therefore, whoever is only concerned with the development of the chakras without working for their Christification transform themselves into black magicians, magicians, these black magicians. Now understand what he what, what is being said here by Samuel um, on um, war, the seven words. Because this is what most of you are doing. You're not raising the seed atom during your meditations. The Kundalini comes up and raises the seed atom. There's a seed atom in which that is laid in the manger. Right here, solar plexus area. Every 28 days, correlating with the moon, correlating with the woman's menstrual cycle, correlating with the tides and the floods um, and the tides and the waters of life, the waters on planet Earth. You are supposed to raise the seed atom, which is Christ or chrysum, up as you raise the kundalini up. Most people don't realize that. Therefore, they transform into black magicians. So this is why you can't listen to everyone who teach on the science of kundalini and pranic energy work, because they never speak about the crucifixion or Christification. They don't know about becoming Christified. You become the Christ. And the only way to do that is by resurrecting the seed atom that is produced from the pineal gland. This chrysum, chrysum, a golden whitish substance, this seed atom that become laid within your solar plexus. The Kundalini is supposed to raise and resurrect and ascend that energy inside of you at the solar plexus area, the manger, as Christ was laid in, and resurrect it back to the Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Therefore, whoever is only concerned with the development of the chakras without working for the what for their Christification transforms themselves into black magicians. And we're not talking about black in a good sense. We're talking about dark arts. Selfishness. 
No concern for others. Just concerned with me, myself, and I. In other words, you are back to goddamn basic level of interpersonal consciousness. 18 breaths a minute. The demonic slash beast breath. You haven't really transcend consciousness like you're supposed to. That's the problem that I'm seeing in this conscious community. Or rather, yet yeah, unconscious community. Truthfully, there's only a few people that I would say that are conscious in the community. Myself, Brother Panic, Brother Azazil, who is known as Brother Azariah Bimbe, Others, I see them with habits. I see them with addictions. I see them with false grandeur of illusion, delusion. This is what I personally see. I'm not gonna do a lot of spiritual work in front of you. My spiritual work happens behind the scenes. I teach you how to do it for yourself. If you've seen enough of my videos, then you already know this. I'm one of the few that are actually teaching you how to do these particular um, meditation techniques. So yes, the Kundalini is innate for all people. At the base of the spine, subtler than the physical body lies the Kundalini energy. At the base of the spine is talking about the sacral bone area. This triangular downward bone structure. Inside of there is the Kundalini. Also, the Kundalini is within the latent form of the eight mitosis, the eight cells of mitosis. There's eight cells that form your physical body into existence. And these eight cells never change your whole entire life. These eight cells stay the same. The other 76 trillion cells in your body changes over a seven year period. But these eight cells never change. And it is from there that the Kundalini extends from. Lies the Kundalini energy or spiritual energy in a latent form, regardless of what religious, spiritual, or meditation tradition one follows the awakening of this energy by whatever name you call it, whether it's Umbalini within South African teachings in which that is spoken of by Krita Mutwa, the Sanskrit Vedic teachings, who I refer to as the Indo Kushites, called Kundalini, or the Christian teachings in which that speaks about the Holy Spirit. Whatever name that you call it, is a most innate and essential part of spiritual advancement, unfoldment, or realization. But you have to do it in the means of resurrecting the seed atom that is placed there every single month, every 28 days. This is the 12 months of Christmas. My true love gave to me. The true love is your higher self. This is what's supposed to be happening or this goddamn gossip shit that y'all niggas getting caught up in. Well, I wonder what's going on with Polite today. I wonder what's going on with Young Pharaoh today. I wonder what's going on. Fuck that. Get the goddamn spiritual work in. The niggas unrighteous, then they'll pay with their lives. This is the law of karma. If they did something in which that was not good in your eyes, then they will reap what they sow. This is biblical, Quranic. Judaism speaks on it. Hinduism speaks on it. Shintoism speaks on it. Taoism speaks on it. There is no escape. Get to motherfucking work. And people have a problem with me cussing. I cuss because I get tired. 
of them having to explain this information over and over again. And it seems that the people that gets it are very, very few. Very few. Very minute. That are actually working on their God selves. So this is what we're talking about. You weren't about the, the serpent, the serpent, the Kundalini energy. The word Kundalini means serpentine fire. Earth, when the fire told your ass that back in 1977 on the All in All album. The Kundalini comes up through the Shoshuna, the spinal cord, the spinal column, through the 33 vertebrates to enter into the third ventricle with the pineal gland, as you see here, is located. This is where the serpent used to be at. However, the serpent fell, remember? Iblis fell from heaven. And because of what he did in the Garden of Eden, talking about your physical body, Adam and Eve, talking about the right and left hemisphere of the brain, this consciousness fell from here, the highest level, the seventh chakra, down back to the base of the spine, with the abode of the Kundalini is now said to reside within the majority of people on planet Earth. Who don't know nothing about crucifixion within, but they worrying about a white Jesus coming from out the goddamn sky and clouds on a white horse. Because they seen that shit in the goddamn fake ass religion, Jehovah Witness, formed by a damn Charles Tess Russell, who's part of the goddamn Russell family, which is one of the 13 top Illuminati families. His uncle, William Russell, who formed the goddamn 1832 Skull and Bone Society on Yale University. Y'all better do your research. And put all these keys together. You think it's a, a coincidence that we have the sun disc in between the eyes, the ancient Egyptians rocket, the Hindus rocket? Other indigenous groups rock this symbol in between the eyes, symbolic to the resurrection of the serpentine fire inside of you, the sun disc. From Lucifer to Christ, the two brothers on the same path known as the morning star. However, one is higher than the other. Same polarity. Angels ascending and descending upon Jacob's ladder. Jacob's ladder is your spinal column. The 33 vertebrates. So you worry about the serpent when it's at the base of the spine, what we refer to as Lucifer, the devil. But as that kundalini energy resurrects up inside of you, it becomes the Christ. It becomes the Christ. Here it is. In India, the seers and the sages were called the Nagas, meaning the wise serpents. What did Jesus say? Bees and wise as serpents, but yet gentle as doves. This is Jesus saying that. Huh. He told you that. Huh. Didn't he? Be wise as serpents, but yet gentle as doves. In other words, be the Nagas. By raising the seat of light, Kundalini through the 33 vertebrates, the 33 nerves. And the related seats and unfolding the set the third eye through the 12 cr cranial nerves and the related seats will obtain wisdom and spiritual powers. This is how you gain your powers. Everyone looking for, for powers just so miraculously appearing. It ain't gonna miraculously appear. You gotta do some goddamn work. You gotta do some work. So when you turn the 12 pair of cranial nerves upside down, what does it look like? It looks like what is worn on top of the heads of the pharaohs. 
the where that is on top of the head of the pharaohs, the serpent, the central snake, the raisin of the Kundalini at the forehead, above the eyes, the eyebrow, above there, as you see the Hindus do, or as the beginning of that of the ancient Egyptians, Kemites, Kemites. as you see here, look on the crown of Osa. You see the sun coming up right here and the serpent coming out. That is raising the seed of light called Kundalini. We call it the Holy Spirit in Christianity. Umbalini. This internal power. Umbalini, a primal force used by the Zulu shamans to connect their minds with deities in the spirit realm. Described as sometimes or something like a hot coil snake bursting through the top of your head. This is Krita Mutwa. It is a state achieved through sitting still, breathe deeply, eliminating the negative thoughts and drawing up the power of the soul. Similar archetype Kundalini can be found in the Sanskrit in the Eastern spiritual traditions. The ancient Egyptians referred to it as the Uraeus or the Caduceus of the serpent crown shown on the Egyptian and the Nubian royalty, also known as the Naga or the Negus. Negus. Among many indigenous African cultures, the Uraeus is the symbol of wisdom, power, and protection. You want to feel secure? You want to feel protected? Raise your Kundalini. But with the seed atom in mind that lays at the white Solar plexus, the manger that is spoken of within the Bible. Jesus was laying in the manger. He was laid in the manger. This is the manger. It's the solar plexus area, the top part of the abdominal brain. The abdominal brain. You just don't have one brain. You have several brains. You have your brain, which is based on the cerebrum and the cerebellum. That's two. Then you have your heart, which also scientists found neurons within the heart. Then you have your abdominal brain, small and large intestine, but they also found neurons. So you have your instincts and your intuition, your feelings. Your instincts, feelings, intuition. Instincts, feelings, intuition. Either one of the three or all three can keep your ass alive. Hence, protected. Hence, having power. Hence, having wisdom. This is why those who follow Zachariah Ascension didn't get this shit right. Zachariah Ascension said that the Anunnaki's mean those who come in 50s from up there in the sky down to earth. Bullshit. The word Anu is talking about a people who are known as the Twa people, the pygmies. They are the Anu people. And Anu is not just a serpent race who enslaved the Sumerians or the Lulu who is known as man, mankind, and forced them to mine for gold. They were the humanoid pharaohs of Suma, known as the Anu, means on high. Naki means serpent. So the on high serpent, this is what we've seen here, the on high serpent. Look at the crown of, of um, um, Unknin, Unknin, known as Akhenaten, or Amenhotep IV, from the 18th dynastic period. Look what's on his crown, the serpent. Look what's on the crown of his son, Tutankhamun, also known as Tutankhamun. The serpent. This is what this is all talking about. This is the serpent on high. 
This is talking about the Anunnaki's were the royalty who knew how to raise their kundalini, chi energy, their inner power, their seat of light. Zachariah Sitchin is a paid liar who was only trying to hide your history. You must remember all ancient texts engraved in stone was done by elite priesthood and all texts written by a priesthood is written in symbolical, mythological, allegorical, and or metaphorical form. Hence, anytime you are in the search for enlightenment, you are mining for gold because this is internal alchemy. Transforming base led to gold. Overstay? This is what we're talking about. You don't believe me? Look here. You have the man, the Nubian. He have the crook and the flail, as we already talked about. The rod and our staff shall comfort me. Well, how is he being comforted? He's being comforted because he has transformed himself, raised his kundalini, as you see here, offered his offerings to the gods. Who is the gods? His gods are his chakras. Higher self. The DNA is the ancestors. So you have the deity who we call Sata. S-A-T-A. -A. You add an N on it, that's Satan. This is Sata, who we refer to as Satan. Bringing forth the offerings. You better bring forth your offerings, in particular the seed, Adam, that resides within the manger. Every 28 days it is produced, just like the woman's menstrual cycle. Men, women, all of us have it. You see here, the sun disc, which we just finished seeing in between the eyes, as you see here above Ra's head, Ra is light, the sunlight in particular. The rays of the sun is coming down in rainbow type of colors and is shining upon the pineal gland, which sits on top of the head, as you see here, in which that is covered with the grass of life, which is symbolic to vegetation is being fed. The hands are up in order to mean receiving this holy energy, sunlight. This is where they get that we were sun worshipers from. We ain't worship no goddamn sun in that way. We understood the science of Qigong and Tai Chi, Reiki and pranic energy work that, they, that, that is referred to now, cosmic energy, direct cosmic energy as it's referred to now, electromagnetic energy as it's referred to now, sunlight, the breath, shoe. And everything is infused with the shoe light. Food. Water. Our pineal gland wants you to sit up higher inside of the head. But at the age of seven, you got hard headed. The fontanelles begin to start closing. These are the parts, the four parts, particularly because your, your head is made up of 22 bones. That's why 22 is the number for master builder, psychic development, powers, because it's 22 bones. But these main four bones that fuse together after the age of seven, when you become hard-headed and you develop your own personality, Iblis, Shaitan, whispers into the ears of man at the age of seven, if you don't transfer the child over to the father so he can raise him, this is within Islam. Islam.
So at birth, we would say, at Udu Bilahi Mina Shaitan al Rajim. At Udu Bilahi Mina Shaitan al Rajim, which means, protect me from Satan the curse. We whisper that within the ears of the child during the name ceremony. Also during the time of when someone is receiving their shahata. The shahada, which means they're witnessing. They bear witness to the fact that Allah is one, a hud within Islam. This is what we are talking about here. The oneness. How to form your one God from the three. From the Holy Trinity. That's the problem with Christianity. They focus on the Holy Trinity when you're supposed to be making the, the three to one. You got five, three, one. Five senses, three Dantians, one God, your higher self, your Lord and personal savior. So early on in our earthly development, we was light vampires. Meaning that the Melanites applied the teachings of Kundalini Yoga, Tantra Kriya Yoga, Reiki, Pranic Healing, Qigong, Tai Chi, Aikido, Wing Chun. These are the names that we refer to all of this now, which are actually based on the science of light. The light vampire absorbs the energy with permission, consciously from the earth, air, food, water, sun, and cosmos universe. While on the other hand, the psychic vampire does not ask permission and is oftentimes unconscious and unaware of themselves draining other people's energy. And of course, there are, are conscious psychic vampires as well. You need to determine which one you are. Are you gonna be like Goku? and ask permission like he did when he forms his spirit bomb or his spirit ball. He asked for permission from the people. He asked for permission from the soil, from the ground, from the air, from the waters. Remember he asked for the spirit, the prana from all those living things that it can be utilized to destroy so they can be the savior or a defender for the planet Earth. You too must do the same thing. Your human aura, bioenergy. Aura is associated with feelings. Remember, we just talked about the heart. Positive feelings generate white, generally creates bright colors. So you can have a rainbow looking auric feel. People have told me that my um, auric field looked rainbow as well as also gold. This is what you want. Let me talk about the rainbows, the inverted rainbow of the of the um, LBGD2 PRTG community. Get, might have got that mixed up a little bit. <laughs> I'm clowning. But you know what I mean. Because they inverted the rainbow. Right here. Serpents or snakes have always been a symbol of knowledge and wisdom. The same motif of a talking snake or serpent connected with knowledge and wisdom is found in the book of Genesis in the biblical story of the Garden of Eden. However, if you look here, you see that the serpent is sending knowledge to the man. And where is it being sent to? The same place where the serpent comes out at on the crowns of the pharaohs and pharaohs, the kings and queens of ancient Kemet. 
Where else are we receiving the light from the cosmos, as you see here from the stars, cause the ancestors or the minds of the ancestors or concentrations of the stars in the sky. When the ancestors die, they become a star in the sky. They are born in the constellation Orion, in the Orion Nebula. Stars are born. That's the light that people see when they die. When they say at the end of the tunnel, when we was going through a tunnel, and then at the end of the tunnel, I seen a great light. They say it's Jesus or the man upstairs, which is constellation Orion. Orion means heaven. And it's in the shape of a man. <laughs> yeah, we're going to explain all this shit today. Flying serpents. In ancient Egypt, you had man flying on a serpent. The Aztec god Quetzalcoatl. The ancient Egyptian god Happy. They both flew on serpents. This is the serpent of wisdom. This is the risen serpent. The flying serpent. This is the serpent that has resurrected within you and I, within each and every one of us. This is the serpent, the Uraeus, Aurarios, to raise up, to climb, to raise up the spine, climbs Jacob's ladder, to sit on the forehead, to symbolize wisdom, knowledge, power, light, resurrection. Jesus symbolized the serpent. This is why he said, be ye wise as serpents. He himself became the serpent. When you see him in between the um, two thieves, the two male factors in the Bible, whether it's in the book of Matthew, John, or Mark, he resurrected. He gave up the ghosts. He resurrected ascended to the Father to sit on the right-hand side of the Father, symbolized as the serpent comes up to activate the right hemisphere of the brain, the holistic portion of the brain, no longer just analytical and rational. Some of you niggas are too anal. You got to get some of that left, some of that right hemisphere brain thinking going on, abstract thinking, holistic thinking. You think this is bullshit? Well, hold on, let's see who this serpent is according to the Dictionary of Angels. A Dictionary of Angels including the Fallen Angels. Gustav Davison. Uriel means the fire of God. But well, hold up. Even in the TV show Lucifer showed you that Lucifer was still the son of God and he was sent into hell to be the ruler over hell to teach him how to rule his own domain. So that when God went to another universe, Lucifer would take over the present universe because he would know how to rule because he would have not just ruled in hell, but on earth and on earth, he fell in love. And the thing that caused him to fall in love was what God made. And guess who the father of Decker was in the TV show Lucifer? Amadel, or Lucifer's brother. With the brother who played in um, The Temptations. He played blue in the Temptations. Amidadel was the father of Decker, the cop in which that Lucifer fell in love with and could not resist, and she could not resist him. And they ruled together as a divine couple, unlike God. God went with his wife. And she formed a new universe, and he went with her to go there to rule. And who is the God 
over this universe at that time. He was a brother. He was the guy who played in the Allstate commercial. <laughs> but that was simply putting the white man over the universe or uh, over this realm once again, which we deny that because um, at Mitadel, he was supposed to be the ruler over this. And he gave it up so that Lucifer could do it. So he took himself out the running. And surely he would have won. You see, this is Uriel, fire of God, one of the leading angels in the non canonical lore and ranked various, variously as a seraphim or seraph, cherubim, a cherub. Region of the sun, flame of God, angel of the present, presiding over what? Tartarus, which is Hades. Uriel resided over hell? Because Tartarus or Hades is hell. One of the seven names of hell. Well, two of the seven names of hell. Tartarus and Hades is two of the seven names of hell. And he ruled over hell. Uriel, who is an archangel of salvation. I might add said in Isra 2, in the latter works, he acted as heavenly interpreter of Isra vision. In Enoch 1, he is the angel who watches over thunder and terror. In the book of Adam and Eve, he was um, presided over repentance. Uriel is supposed to be, said Abbot and um, Anscar, um, Veneer, in the teaching of the Catholic Church, the spirit who stands at the gate of the lost Eden with the fury, fury sword. So who stood at the angel at the at um the Garden of Eden who did not allow Adam and Eve to go back to the Garden of Eden was Uriel. The same as your Kundalini has not resided, has not allowed for Adam and Eve to enter back into the Garden of Eden once again. With the flaming sword is the Kundalini itself. The book of Adam and Eve designate him as this spirit, i.e. one of those cherubims of Genesis 3. He is revoked in some of the ancient lineages. He has been identified as one of the angels who helped bury Adam and Abel in paradise, as the dark angel who wrestled with Jacob at Peniel. So the Uriel wrestled with Jacob and named Jacob Israel at the land of Peniel. And you know, the Peniel symbolizes the pineal gland. So that means Jacob, the wrestler, symbolized the same as Ophitius, the wrestler, the serpent wrestler that is mentioned as the 13th zodiac sign today. Jacob symbolized who we call Imhotep. So Jacob is the story of Imhotep. Joseph is the story of Imhotep as the destroyer of the host of Shina, um, the Shina um, Karib, as the messenger sent by God to Noah to warn him of the impeding flood, or dullage, of all of which feat or mission has been credited to other angels as elsewhere noted. In the view of Louis Gasberg, or Ginsberg, the Prince of Lights, as in the manual of disciples or discipline, referred to Uriel. In addition, Uriel is said to have disclosed the mysteries of the heavenly arcana to Isra, interpreted prophecies, and led Abraham out of Ur. In later Judaism, said R.A. Charles, the book of Enoch, we find Uriel instead. So what happened is that Uriel is in Hebrew, the fire of God, but in Latin, Uriel is Lucifer. And he's the archangel of salvation. So Uriel, coming from the seventh chakra, used to have the seat of Gabriel, which is the third eye area. He sat one seat under Michael, which is the crown seat, the crown area. 
here. Michael is the archangel, the seraphim, and the seraphim wants you to rule here at the top of the head, which you see the serpent coming out at the crown of the head, or in particular, at the top portion of the forehead of the head. And he used to have the seat of Gabriel, which is here at the third eye area, the pituitary gland, which is one seat under the pineal gland, which is ruled over by Michael. The archangel, the highest archangel who sits over the cherubims and the seraphims. This is an internal process, y'all. Not no goddamn spooky book reading prophetic shit that's supposed to come later on. This is something that is happening already within you. So Uriel transformed from from Uriel at the base chakra at the genitals to the solar plex to the navel chakra to become Samuel to here to the solar plex to become Gimiel to here at the heart chakra to become um, Raphael to here at the throat chakra to become Israel or Asrael here at the third eye to become Gabriel and here finally to become Michael Mikael known as so this is how the the seven archangels transform. This is through your chakra system. They symbolize the chakra system, the Shinkaras, the Aritus, as they are called within ancient Kemet. The word Hades, what does the word Hades mean? Let's look it up. In English, usage of the word Hades first appeared in 1600 as a transliteration of the Greek word in the line of the Apostle Creed. He descended into hell the place of waiting, the place of spirits in prison. Some of you niggas are in hell right now because you're ruled by your lower nature. You got to get a grip on that shit. You're ruled by your lower nature. Physical objects matter as far as food, clothing, and shelter, no doubt. But you don't have to sell your soul for food, clothing, and shelter. Act like a fucking crackhead for food, clothes, and shelter. I've seen niggas act like crackheads for food, clothes, and shelter. You've seen it too. I ain't gonna have to name names, but you see the shit that is going on in the so-called conscious community now. Niggas acting like fucking crackheads for food, clothes, and shelter. You ain't got to act like that. You be righteous, the shit comes to you. Full clothing and shelter comes to you as a righteous person. Someone who's trying to make a difference on planet Earth. And really trying to do this. Ain't just talking about the shit, doing it. And wish we could be doing it even greater things, greater works. But it's hard to meet other righteous people. Real righteous people. The place of waiting, the place of spirits in prison, 1 Peter 3rd chapter 9 verse, in which Jesus is said, affirms that he's going after the crucifixion. Jesus even went to hell in order to get the keys over hell, if you remember. Because this descent, known in the Old and Middle English as the heroine of hell, needed to be distinguished from what has come to be most usually called hell, the place of state of those finally damned. The word and the transliteration are transliterated and given a differentiated meaning. Uriel is also regarded as the keeper of beauty and light. Just like Lucifer, who was most beautiful, is angel in heaven. This is who he's talking about. Uriel is regarded as the keeper of beauty and light. Uriel, the fire of God also known as God is my light in Hebrew, is one of the archangels of post exilic rabbinic traditions and is also con um, considered or um, certain, excuse me, minor Christian traditions. In apocryphal, Kabbalistic, and occult works, Uriel has been equated or confused with Uriel, Nuriel, Uriel, Jeremiah, um, Veritel, Zariel, Suriel, Purpuriel, Parunel, Ophanunel, Jacob, 
Azarel and Raphael. Well, some of these names actually do belong to Uriel. That's listed here. And you can find that in the book that I just made mention of, the Dictionary of Angels. Possibly Uriel's highest position is that of an angel of presence, peace, prince of presence, angel of the face, angel of sanctification, an angel of glory. A prince of the presence is an angel who is allowed to enter the presence of God. Uriel, along with Seriel, Jehoel, Zegagel, Akitriel, Metatron, and Yolifia and Mikael, Gabriel, Raphael, and Nathaniel holds this position. These are the angels that can go before the presence on the face of God. The angel of his presence title is often taken to mean Shekinah. So Uriel symbolizes Shekinah, the angel of his presence. Shekinah within Hebrew is the feminine face of God. Uriel is the feminine face of God, symbolized as the Kundalini. Shekinah is the Hebrew word for Kundalini, the Vedic word, the biblical, Kabbalistic, apoptical, occultic name is Uriel. But it is, and the other terms mentioned also, is used as an alternative name for the angel Metatron. We find Uriel instead of Faniel as one of the four angels of the presence. Uriel is often identified as a cherub, the angel of repentance. He stands at the gates of Eden with a fiery sword, or the angel who watches over thunder and terror. In the apocalypse of Peter, he appears as the angel of repentance, who is geographically represented as being a pitiless, as a, any demon. Pitiless. He, he don't have no pity on you, on you niggas. In the life of Adam and Eve, Uriel is regarded as the spirit, one of the cherub. In the third chapter of Genesis, he is identified as one of the angels who helped bury Adam and Abel in the Eden. Or in paradise, as we would say. Similar for the medieval Jewish mystical traditions, Uriel has become the angel of Sunday. So angels, so so um, Christians go to church on Sundays, which means the sun, the day of the sun. Uriel symbolizes the day of the sun. Uriel is within Hebrew, Shekinah, the angel of presence, or the face of the, or what is known as the into the presence of God, or known as um, the face of God. He's the angel of poetry, one of the holy Zephyrites. Uriel is depicted as the destroyer of the host of Sinachebrum. Sinachebrum, a Sinachebrum. He checks the door of, Egypt, of the Egypt for the lamb's blood during the plague. He also holds the keys to the pit during the end times and led Abraham to the west. He held the keys over the pit, over the over hell. And remember, Jesus is said they have gone down into hell to get the keys. Who he got them from? They said Lucifer, but really it was Uriel. His Hebrew name. We keep talking about the Latin name Lucifer, but his Hebrew name is Uriel. His Egyptian name is Heru. Oh shit. Oh, I just told you the secret. And who is Heru? Heru is Jesus. One and the same. In moderate angelology, Uriel is identified variously as a seraph, cherub, uh, re, a region of the sun, flame of God, angel of the divine presence, presider over Taurus hell, to Taurus hell, angel of salvation, and in later scriptures identified with Faniel, face of God, he is often depicted carrying a book or a papyrus scroll, papyrus. Okay, papyrus, that, that's, that's Egyptian. Scroll representing wisdom. Uriel is the patron of the arts. In case you didn't know where evil came from, let me 
Isaiah 45, 7. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. So stop looking at Uriel like, like, like it's some, some off the wall shit. Lucifer. Uriel is Lucifer. I'm telling you that. Let's look at it. Lucifer was a Latin name for the planet Venus. So Venus is not merely the Latin name, Lucifer. As the morning star, because it's a, what they call a star, of course we know that Venus is not a star, it's a, it's a planet. And it comes up minutes before the sunrise and you can see it um, at night as one of the as this brightest object in the sky outside of the moon. It's even brighter than the star Sirius. You know, it's Sirius where we come from. In the ancient Roman era, it is often used for mythological and religious figures associated with the planet. Due to the unique movement and discontinuous appearance of the Venus in the sky, mythological, mythology, mythology surrounding these figures often involve a fall from the heavens to earth or the underworld. Interpretations of the similar term in the Hebrew Bible, translated uh, tra into King James Version as Lucifer, led to the Christian traditions applying the name Lucifer and associated stories to the fall from heaven to Satan. Most modern scholars regard these interpretations as questionable and translate the term in the relative Bible passage as morning star, shining one, rather than as a proper name, Lucifer. As a name for the devil, the more common meaning of English, Lucifer is rendering of the Hebrew word Isaiah in Isaiah 14, 20, 12, given the King James Version of the Bible. The translator of the version translate the word from the Latin Vulgate, which translates the Latin word Lucifer, meaning the morning star, the planet Venus, or as an adjective, light bringing. As the name for the morning star Lucifer is a proper name in a capitalized in English. In Greco-Roman civilization, the morning star was often personified and considered a god or the title of a deity associated with the planet. Story of Lucifer, his origin. To find the origin of Lucifer, return to the origin of the Old Testament. In the Hebrew, the name Lucifer is translated from the Hebrew word halal, which means brightness. This designation refers to Lucifer is the rendering of the morning star or as the son of the morning or bright star, which is represented in Isaiah. And remember, it's also represented in the book of Revelations because Jesus is also referred to as the morning star, showing that they're one and the same. How you are falling from heaven, O day star, son of dawn. How are you cut down to the ground and you have laid the foundations low? You said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. All right, the God is talking about Mikael, one who is like God. Mikael means one who is like God. Michael means one who is like God or one who dares to be like God. He wanted to raise his stars above that God, Michael, who is also Idolabroth, which is Ptah, which is a whole nother story. I will sit on the Mount of Assembly on the heights of Sephra. I will ascend to the top of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. All right. So and what happens? And that and that happens. What's wrong with that? That happens. Here it is. Uraeus, which is Uriel. The word Uraeus and Uriel is one of the same. This is where Uriel, the name in Hebrew Uriel comes from, is from Uraeus. To rise, to climb, to raise up, to spine, climb Jacob's ladder. This is him seeing his throne above this as the um as the seventh chakra in the abode of Michael, one who dares to be like God. He dares to be like God. What's wrong with that? You dare to be like God. This is the key. And understand, I'm saying this from the overstanding portion. Here it is. Jesus, I have sent my angels to testify to you about these things for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star, Revelation 22, 16. Angels are called morning stars. Uriel is an angel. He's a morning star. Jesus, the son of God, 
obviously is an angel on earth, was a morning star, if you look at it in that sense. You know, it was actually Heru, and Heru is the son of um, Osaru or Osar, Osiris, which is Orion, which is heaven. Job 38, 6, 7. When they sang for joy, when God created the heavens and the earth, Satan was created at the most beautiful of all God's angelic beings. Well, hold up. It just been telling you that Uriel is also regarded as the keeper of beauty and light. Showing you same thing, one and the same. Astrologers consider Venus, the morning star, as the brightest. Since Satan was the most beautiful and powerful of all the angels before he sent it, it's appropriate that he is called morning star. So as you see, Jesus said that he's the bright and morning star. You see that Lucifer, who is Uriel, is also called the morning star and beautiful, beauty, beauty, beautiful, beautiful of all God's angelic beings. And he is, as I said, regarded as the keeper of beauty and light. He symbolized the sun. Heru symbolized the sun. Jesus symbolized the sun, the son of God. Not just the S O N, but the S U N. Ooh, look, 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 look. See, they can't tell you this information like this. We got to get it. Hopefully, this is ringing some bells and making this shit pop in your mind for you. Right here, Venus. It's the second planet from the sun, orbiting around 224.7 Earth days. It has the longest rotational period, 243 days, of any planet in the solar system. It rotates in the opposite direction to most other planets, meaning the sun will raise on the west as in the east. It does not have any natural satellites. It is named after the Roman goddess of love and beauty. Same thing as Uriel. Notice that. And it's the second brightest natural object in the night sky after the moon, as we already said. Reach it as an apparent magnitude of um, negative 4.6, brightest enough to cast shadows at night and um, rarely visible in the, um, in the naked eye in broad daylight. Orbiting the, within Earth orbit, Venus is an interior planet and never appears to venture far from the sun. Its maximum angular degree for the sun is 47.8, all right? Venus is a terrestrial planet and is sometimes called Earth sister planet because of their similar size mass approximate to the sun and the bulk composition. It is radically different from the Earth in other aspects, all right? I'll let you read all of that, but we'll come down. It has been made sacred to gods of the many cultures and has been a prime inspiration to writers and poets as the morning star and evening star. Venus was the first planet to have its motions plotted across the sky as early as the second millennium BC. So, you see here, once some future king is Osiris, which was Orion, we told you last year, we was the first to tell you about last year. I did a video, 10 hour video with Brother Panic and we broke down Beetlejuice or Beetlegeist. All right. Which is coming from the right arm of Osiris. And it says Osiris, Orion, once and future king. That means the future king will come upon planet earth. This is the time. This is why they had to go into their process of getting everyone vaccinated. The internal terms define a path of the seed through birth, life, and to, to hidden ancestry. I'm gonna say that again. Internal chambers defy paths from seed through birth and life to hidden ancestry. The right hand of God is coming because we're talking about from the right shoulder of God is beetle guys, a beetle juice. It's coming down. Now.
Feel the universal force, the forces of the North Star, the Big Dipper above your head, and the cosmic particle falls in front of you and it shine down to your pearl. Feel your pearl starts to absorb this energy and then feel it expand. The thalamus gland and the hypothalamus gland, these points are part of the cranial pump and they help us to access the energy of the Big Dipper constellation. Now, this is in a microcosmic orbit meditation and stellar heavenly chi technique of Mantak Chia that he teaches from the Taoist traditions. Do this, but also do Sirius, which he never mentioned Sirius, but yet all the cultures and hidden um, 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 uh, uh, the Dogon, the Egyptians, in particular the Tamarians or the Tamarian people, the um, Ethiopians, the Coptic Christians, all of them, everybody mentioned Sirius. The, even the Quran and Islam in the 53rd um, chapter, known as Najin, the 102nd ayat, if I'm not mistaken, mentions that God, the Lord of, is the Lord of Sirius. Allah is the Lord of the mighty star Sirius. Everybody mentions Sirius except for Mantak Chia. This is where we're supposed to be absorbing our energy from. It's from Sirius. If you want an Orion, if you want to have that energy in which that we just seen here, internal chambers, the five path from sea through birth to life and life to hidden ancestry. Because it says Orion, which is Os Osiris, Osa, Osiris, or Osiris, or Osaru. The seer is the once and future king. You want the king here? We ain't talking Martin Luther, the king. He was an example of that. And when he went off the path, coming from the Boule system, being that the Boule are the, uh, 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 the advisors to the kings, they killed him. The last three years of his life, he changed phenomenally. He started going from civil rights to human rights. So you want the once a future king, Osiris, Orion, the star constellation Sirius? The great provider, the once and future king, That's coming down towards the king's chamber. That's the energy that's coming down for the king's chamber. The king is here. The king is here. Muhammad Ali already told y'all that. The champ is here. But we're talking about the king is here. The energy for this to happen is already here. Get your asses out into the daytime and absorb the energy from the solar energy called the sun. Get your ass out at the nighttime and absorb the cosmic energy from the star constellation Sirius and Orion. The two constellations that Mantai Chi does not speak about, but he speaks about the Big Dipper, the Little Dipper, how it symbolizes the thalamus and the hypothalamus. So that means that Sirius constellation and Orion constellation symbolizes the pituitary gland and the pineal gland. The first steps in opening to the stellar energies is in the microcosmic orbit where we open the door to the heavenly chi by focusing on the North Star, in this case, Sirius, and the Big Dipper energies, which is in this case, Orion. Concentrating on this energy, their color, and associated feelings of their energy, our main doorway to the heavenly chi at this level is our crown. The bai, the bai hu, bai, the bay, the bai of the bay, the bay hu point, the bay. See, this is the point of being a bay is not just a motherfucking name, but a goddamn point of origin, which is what? The top of your head, the bay hu point. Internally, the hypothalamus is the point of correspondence to the bay you. The point, the back of the crown um, points to what is known as the Kung Lao Mountain or the Kung Lung Mountain, the highest peak of humans 
or in heaven. This is where you develop the golden dragon body at. The pineal gland is the point most sensitive to the light of the heaven. Once you are able to open to and tap the outer energy source of the North Star and the Big Dipper, or in this case, Sirius and Orion, you can use them to bring ourselves into balance by absorbing and blending them in much the same way we would adjust the temperature of the waters in a bathtub by adding hot and cold as necessary to bring it to a perfect temperature. If you find we are two yin, you can draw more heavenly chi. If two yang, you can draw more of the earth chi. In this way, we can harmonize our yin and yang energies in the microcosmic orbit practice. So many of you don't know how to do the microcosmic orbit. So it's real simple. You draw energy down into your dantian. So as you breathe in, you draw the energy here to your lower dantian, your navel, about an inch down below your navel and two inches back behind. Then as you exhale, you move the energy to your dantian and pull up your anal muscles. Breathe in again. And this time, raise the energy up to the bay you. Exhale. Back to the perineum. And this is the microcosmic orbit, y'all. And raise the energy up again as you inhale. Exhale, down. Inhale up, exhale down, inhale up, and then as you final, as you finish your final level, visualize the stars as you bring them down, the energy down, and you reside that energy into your navel chakra. You leave it in your navel chakra. Here's an example of that. This is attunement with the cosmic energies of Septu. What is Septu? Septu is serious. Let's get serious. Let's get serious for your love. Jermaine Jackson, niggas. What you know about that? You absorb energy from the constellation Sirius, as I told you. This is what Mantai Chia can't tell you. I'm here to tell you, and I know this shit is the truth, because here you have the attunement. This is on the walls of ancient Kemet. The attunement of the cosmic energies of Septu. Septu is Septa, which is Serious. This is what we're talking about, y'all. This is what we're talking about. All right. So, understand what is going on. All right. Understand what is going on. And um, we're going to finish that right there. I gave you enough to think about and to get on. All right? All right. We out. Peace. Well, before we go, continuing now for days, weeks, months, and years to come, we're moving towards our cherished goal of health, wealth, knowledge of self-enlightenment, better protection, security, better economic conditions, and full contentment. Every action, enterprise, and endeavor which we wish to have or be involved in is bringing increasing rewards. We have so much abundance, success, happiness, and joy in our life that we're able to move towards the oneness of God and goddess in the full release of our inner higher selves. I share. We out.